everybody. I think this is a very, very interesting strategic topic to understand where Israel is heading in data science and AI. And uh, both of you here are the leaders in this area and the influence our future with the plans that you are leading. Um, both Yitzhak Ben Israel and the Professor Benyamini also uh, prepared some slides to share with us right in the beginning uh, of the panel. So what we will do, we will have a very short uh, presentation by Professor <coughs> Ben Israel and Professor Benyamini, and then we will have uh, Q&A after the, the presentation. So please, uh, Yitzhak Ben Israel, show some slides. Let me start with the, what we have done in cyber because it's very relevant here. What we have done in cyber 10 years ago, nine years ago, is to take the high-tech ecosystem, which, is, which was then highly developed in Israel, and shift it a little bit towards cybersecurity because the disciplines, that is computer science, computer engineering, uh, mathematics, etc., were more or less the strong disciplines of the current, then in 2010-11, current ecosystem of Israel. So we didn't have to do too much, but only to shift it a few degrees, not an orthogonal shift. This move was successful, as you know. Today, Israel is something like 8% of the global market in cybersecurity, 18% of the global investment by business sector and private sector, the global investment goes to Israel, and this is a huge uh, portion. And then we started to think, okay, what should be the next move? And after some thinking about it and, and talking with a lot of people, we came to the conclusion that the next move should be around AI. The goal is more or less the same. I, I translated here uh, the paper that was written by the Prime Minister, the current Prime Minister, a year ago which, how it jumps by itself, which started the work, and if, I, I will not read it, and if you, uh, uh, but I'll draw your attention to a few words there. Uh, the goal of this initiative, that's okay? Some AI machine is controlling it? Yeah, if it took over by the AI machine. Hmm? Yeah, here you can go. The, the goal... Uh, the goal of this initiative is, uh, we have two goals. One is to contribute to Israeli uh, economy and the other one to Israeli defense. And uh, we, the, the, the real one is to put Israel as one of the top five countries in the world in terms of uh, AI technology. Now I will jump this and go to the, this one. Now, what do we mean by AI? We have today a, a team of something like 300 people working on it, coming from academy, government, and industry, more or less. And we divided the work into three different axes. Let me start with the right uh, one on the, the technology axis. Technology axis, unlike what usually people, usually all over the world, when people say AI, it's it's undefined term, as, as you know. When people say the AI, they mean the first bullet there some combination of machine learning, deep learning, neural network, and, and data science, which until a year ago we called data analytics, and five years ago we called data mining, and when I was a student of mathematics at the university, we called it uh, statistics. But more or less the same uh, uh, area, how do you take a big set of data and draw some conclusions? out of it, some meaningful conclusions out of it. 
But the way we see it, it's not only this. You see here another uh, four other technological areas which are not directly related to this, the first AI there, but once you have them, you can have a synergetic um, uh, ecosystem which will be much more um, effective than only controlling the first bullet. You take, for example, this IOP, the second line. Once you, you let's say you train a machine to solve a problem, an AI machine, you take an initial set of data, you train it, you send it to work. There is no reason why the machine will stop learning while it's working on the job. In order to do it, you have to attach it to some sensor because it needs feedback. And you have to, to and you need also some communication way, communication that will enable those sensors to communicate because the sensors shouldn't be attached physically, not necessarily attached physically to this uh, machine learning doing its job, but it can be a remote sensor. So if you think about it, you come to the conclusion that IoT, and this is only one example that, that is here, IoT is, will make the whole national move much more efficient than only if then concentrating only on data science and machine learning. You take for what, what we, when we say uh, distributed uh, intelligence, it's a new term. We mean intelligence that is not really um, concentrated in one uh, focal point of computing, but is distributed in in like a, a flock of uh, birds or, or things like this. No one element has, uh, a, a, um, uh, has the total intelligence of the flock. It's like uh, crowdsource and things like this, but the whole group is behaving intelligently. And of course, the most important one maybe is the computing power because the difference between the 80s as was uh, um, um, demonstrated by, by Moshe before, between the 80s and today is that today, the power of computation enable us to really carry out ideas that were already there in the 50s. And then we, uh, when we, you think about uh, uh, power computing, you think about classical ways of computing, like, like uh, super, what we call supercomputers, clusters of course, think about the cloud, think about GPUs, and you think also about the next move which is uh, quantum computing. And, and when we say AI, we mean this. Of course, we have to bear in mind the applications and the other things that the government should do in order to create this, but this is for the introduction. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Professor Yoav Binyamini will present the VATAT uh, data science plan. Doesn't start in the beginning. It doesn't start in the beginning, but it doesn't matter. This is more a talk than a more a talk than a presentation. Uh, so um, the the committee for um, higher education, Amalag, decided about uh, two years ago that uh, uh, data science should be one of the flagship topics to get uh, additional funds and uh, attention uh, in the academic system. Uh, of course, they didn't call it this way. They said big data initiative, because at that time, big data was the big name. Uh, but uh, it's uh, data science, essentially, what we are talking about. And the uh, financing uh, committee, uh, the VATAT, has created a steering committee uh, to address uh, this, uh, this topic. Uh, we met for half a year uh, with a great sense of urgency. Uh, working and meeting and, and so on because we appreciate it that uh, if we want to be in close to a leading situation, we have to act fast. Um, what we found is uh, some, somewhat quite surprising. Uh, there are about only 170 researchers in the academia who claim that more than 85% of their time is devoted to data science. 
a larger number, 230, that about half of the time is devoted to data science activities. And altogether, there are 650 people in the academia that, uh, that state that the data science is uh, part of their uh, activities. And the areas of research, not surprising, are uh, machine learning, statistics, uh, um, deep learning, natural languages, processing, uh, bioinformatics, and so on. Only four mentioned explicitly are uh, AI, but this is not surprising because, as Moshe said, uh, data science has been the, uh, the power behind the new spring in AI, not necessarily the end, as uh, Israel is uh, noted. Uh, we found the spots or islands of excellence in different universities, but they are disassociated. I mean, each one is working separately. There's not much interaction even between the topics of, uh, of core data science. Uh, some universities have uh, six centers that are data science centers in some, se in some sense, some of them having two students and a, and a professor and so on. Uh, there are many PhD students, about 1,200, and if you compare it to the number of researchers, you will see the problem. There are about 1,400 master's students, uh, but there is a problem, because most of them are already involved in industry. They don't devote most of their time to research, and therefore a PhD takes 10 years, a master's degree takes four, five, six years, and so on. And in terms of research, making progress in research, this is a major uh, problem. Uh, so, industry is creating a problem, but most of the people are involved in industry. About 40% of the people in the core data sciences are involved in, um, in industry work, industrial application, mostly in big companies. That's surprising a, a bit, but mostly in big companies. Very little involvement in the public sector, which finances the academic institutions, by the way. So, encountering this situation, we came to uh, the following recommendation. We had a budget of 150 million uh, new Israeli shekels for the four years, and we decided that the main part will go to uh, initiating research centers. I'll speak about uh, shortly. So 120 million will be devoted to research centers. This will be done in two phases. Phase one, fast, and this is the 64 uh, thousand that, uh, million that you see there. Fast, that means that we already, a call went out, university answered, and uh, proposals were approved last week for seven of the 10 uh, establishments. So work is starting. The second one is uh, more competitive, and so we will delay it for about half a year so that people can start to work together and come up with more ambitious plans for the second phase. Uh, then we have, um, a PhD and postdoc fellowship. We have very few of them, but we decided that it's important at the beginning stages of their education to give high support to at least a few students that will push their research fast in, in, the, in the direction and put them on track. Uh, any more contribution to this track would be highly appreciated. There are uh, proposals by ISF, grant proposals, uh, both with the public sectors, jointly with support from Israel Digital, and with the army, jointly supported by the army. Uh, those initiatives by the army will be completely open. There, is no, there will be no limitation in terms of, uh, of uh, secrecy and so on. Uh, there will be a cloud, uh, cloud computing, uh, sort of centralized uh, location for cloud computing, and we are exploring different ways Maybe that will combine the academia with other initiatives in Israel. As far as the research centers, before I move to one more slide about them, uh, the research centers in the university will create an Israeli data science initiative, a joint center that uh, will, be, will not be big and will be combined, the management general will be combined from the uh, heads of the centers in the university. It will be the focal point, the contact point for organizations to reach the entire uh, group, either from abroad, from industry, uh, get uh, an overall look about the needs and the progress that will be made. As far as the research centers go, uh, we envision that each institution would establish a single over 
overarching data science center, in disciplinary, in interdisciplinary in nature, promoting fruitful collaboration and cross fertilization between fields and subfields. The idea is to encourage and support research in core data sciences, cooperation between core fields, interdisciplinary work, and cooperation with public bodies such as the government, uh, National Insurance Institute of Israel, and the industry. And the only the only requirement that we made from university is that 50% of the budget will go to these cooperative ideas. Within, between core field, interdisciplinary work and outside with industry and the, the public bodies. There's also technical support, data science education, uh, that is not to create, to create pro it is to create programs, new courses, uh, in Tel Aviv, they want to, to create a data science AI uh, school in some sense. And then finally, gathering and organizing accessible uh, data uh, databases. So uh, in, in this uh, way, and this work has started, uh, I note the importance of the relationship with industry. For example, in the competitive call, we ask each center that, uh, that part of this uh, requirement is to present a a IP program which will be agreed upon and will not have to be negotiated again and again. So trying to make both the cooperation inside and outside a much more meaningful and fruitful. Uh, if we're talking about the future of data analysis, then really one of the major questions that we have is will data science remain an inter interdisciplinary uh, area or will it converge to become a discipline of its own? And uh, it is not clear, and it is not agreed by on, and committees in the US National Academy of Science so on, debate this issue as well. What we decided in our effort is to make this feasible, bring the people together, bring the people uh, both within data sciences and, and related fields like economics, psychology, and so on, bring them together, make it feasible. In any case, if we do long, it won't become a single disciplinary one, bringing the people together will create a critical mass that we hope will take the area forward in a much faster pace. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, we don't have much time left, but I, I, I must ask the question uh, for the future of the State of Israel. How do we make a reality in which we can collaborate between industry and academia more efficiently, like do we have a plan to have like a steering committee, a joint steering committee between industry and academia so we can be in sync, not have gaps between the huge advantages that maybe will occur in industry or in academia and we can share a joint uh, vision for the, for the state of Israel between academia and industry. How, how do you see that? If you remember the three axes that I, I've shown, one of them I called government. And this X, uh, X is, is about how the government should enable uh, what we would like to happen in the technology axis or in the application axis, how the government should enable it. Now, the, of course, the government cannot create technology. I mean, this is not the job of the government. It's, it's your job here. Uh, but the government can find mechanisms that will support it once the, we have a clear vision of what we want to do and how to get there. And, and new mechanism, for example, one of the committees that we have here, there is headed naturally by the, by the chairman of the Innovation Authority, Dr. Appelbaum, is about finding new mechanisms, not what we have today, that will make the transfer of knowledge from universities, from academy to industry faster and, and overcome many obstacles that we have today. Um, and I, I don't want to talk about them. There are a lot of obstacles like this, okay? Uh, this is one thing. Another thing is to create uh, education is, a, is another good example. In, when we did the work in cyber, we recommended that we should teach cybersecurity in high schools, not only at the university level. I mean, at the end of the day, we get our students from high school, sometimes from the military. You have to, to deal with these two different sources of uh, manpower in a way, the, the, the defense and 
high schools to teach cybersecurity, to teach in this case uh, artificial intelligence. We think that it, it, at the university level, it should be an obligatory course for any student, not only mathematics, statistics, etc. The, there is no reason why uh, medical doctors, for example, will not learn AI, not to be professionals in AI, but to have a better understanding what uh, the medi medical world can earn from having AI, like the examples that were mentioned by Ben Bassad before, and things like this. Okay. Uh, just to add to this question is about when we will see a, a bachelor degree of data scientist or a master degree of uh, data science. Do we have it already or are we going to have it? Um, yes, I think we will see very soon. Uh, so, for instance, in Tel Aviv, the idea is to have uh, AIDS, uh, at least second degree, quite soon. Um, there is also at the Technion, there is already something at that, and uh, I know that the Hebrew University is starting. There are about 20-something new programs in data sciences. Uh, but related to the, the connection to the uh, education issue, also the Israel Academy of Science have a committee now of how to enhance data science education all across the universities, taking really the direction that you mentioned. By the way, Tel Aviv University also has it. Harvard has it, but they don't know how to do it, so they delayed it in one year. So it's not only us that are working and not knowing exactly how to do it, but uh, it's an effort all throughout the world. Uh, and um, and uh, certainly one of the things we discussed in that committee in the academy is that education should start at the high school level uh, in order to bring people to the university already with enough knowledge to be able to do a course in data science, which is meaningful and not merely telling stories about uh, data science. So that's about education. I think we are heading in this direction. About industry, just uh, uh, two more sentences. Industry is pulling the best talents from the university to the point that it diminishes the, uh, the academy from its... Uh, uh, the idea is to create a system where the cooperation can take place without uh, impoverishing the university. There is, an, there is an effort, and the idea is that the data science center at each university will create their joint work with particular companies and will work out solutions that will be beneficial for both. So you, do, you, do you have today an initiative like we see abroad many AI labs that have uh, been financed by the big industry companies uh, in big uh, academic areas? Do you see like, for example, in academia where big companies, international companies will open AI labs that are being sponsored by them? So people can okay. do the research? That's one of the reasons for creating this uh, Israeli data science initiative. Uh, talking with uh, these large companies, they say, you know, they're too scattered. Exactly what we identified. So there are three people here, people, we won't, we won't uh, support such university. But if there is a one focal point that can take together a few centers and create just a managerial point of view and be then attractive to such, we hope that will make it. Okay. Uh, if you want to have final words, because we're run out of time. Uh, only to, uh, to relate to the uh, last point. In a way, the demand today for AI, AI in this general sense, not only data science. Data science is important, but as I said, not the, the demand for AI, and especially on the machine learning uh, technology coming from industry is so high that uh, the immediate solution by the industry is to take our professors and offer them uh, salaries that the university cannot compete with. This cannot be solved locally. I mean, we need to change the, the rules of what we let our professors do, what we don't let them, uh, because at the end of the day, this will cut off the no, not enough professor means not enough new doctors, and that is not enough research, in the end, you will, uh, the whole issue will uh, uh, degrade to unbearable level. And, and we, we, this is one of, again, one of the things that we, are, uh, in the national move that I mentioned before, we are thinking about how to solve it. Okay, I would like to thank our distinguished guest, and thank you very much for the panel.
and I hope Israel will succeed in AI. Thank you very much.